Welcome back to another installment of Marsh Mondays. I'm Joanne and I'm with the Discovery Hall programs at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. Today with the marsh, I want to share with you one of my favorite parts of the marsh, the plants. Salt marshes are coastal wetlands and can be found along low energy or calm shorelines. The calm waters on these protected shorelines allow grasses and other plants to grow. One of the things that makes the plants of the marsh so important is that they provide refuge to animals, allowing things like crabs, fish, and shrimp to hide from larger predators. Take a look at this image of a salt marsh. Do you see any critters? If we zoom in, you can see a blue crab. Periwinkle snails and fiddler crabs are common finds on our trips to the marsh. Sometimes we even get lucky enough to spot a clapper rail darting between the grasses. Have you ever visited a salt marsh? Maybe while on vacation or near where you live? The plants I'm gonna share with you today are the same or very similar to those found in marshes up and down the east coast of the United States and certainly all across the Gulf Coast. The plants of these coastal marshes help stabilize the shoreline and protect us when we get storms like hurricanes. The two most common plants of our Gulf Coast salt marshes are smooth cord grass and black needle rush. In this image, the cord grass is shorter and closer to the water, and the needle rush is taller and comes to a very sharp point at the end, hence the name needle rush. Both of these marsh plants grow along a horizontal stem structure called a rhizome. New shoots, as well as roots, grow from this rhizome. You may be able to find the rhizomes of grasses growing in your own backyard. Here are a few other important marsh plants. It's important to keep in mind one of the big benefits to having these wetland habitats around is the production of oxygen. These plants are photosynthesizing using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make all of this material plus oxygen. Another group of plants we find in the salt marsh are succulents. Succulents are plants that are able to hold water in their tissues, like in the leaves or stems, to survive growing in arid climates or sandy soils, like cactus. A favorite of mine with a fun name is pickleweed, also called glasswort. Some species of pickleweed are edible and taste salty, like a pickle. Another marsh plant, the sea oxide daisy, while not a true succulent, also has fleshy leaves. This plant lives high in the marsh and produces a beautiful yellow flower in the summertime. But be careful, as the flowers dry, that flower head becomes hard and even spiky. How do these plants, the grasses and succulents, survive in salty water? We call the plants that can tolerate salt halophytes. Some halophytes excrete salt, as you can see in this image of smooth cord grass. Others concentrate the salt into sacrificial leaves, like mangroves. Other shrubs found away from the water's edge but still tolerant of salt spray include the groundsel tree and marsh elder. The nectar from these are an important food source for bees, butterflies, and other insects. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Marsh Monday. Be sure to tune in next Monday where we explore how to use the seine net and catch the actual critters that live in the marsh and call it home.